beautiful ashes reaching out to the world of the heartbroken and the destitute through physical and spiritual rehabilitation, professional and pastoral counseling, rebuilding hope through the Word of God and personal life experiences. Beautiful Ashes, rescuing an endangered generation with Stella Azamadia. Every Thursday at 10 a.m. East African time on Spirit TV, a place for you. Beautiful Ashes is made possible by the grace of God and Kingdom Finances. financial support you're helping beautiful ashes international ministries reach out to those in need with more partners there is a bountiful harvest give today on 0752 044 636 or 0776 044 636 or make a pledge beautiful ashes rescuing an endangered generation for people i just want to welcome you all to beautiful ashes made possible by the grace of god and kingdom finances my name is stella azamadia beautiful ashes has been running here on spirit tv for the last i think this must be the third month Thank you so much for always being around. Thank you for inviting other people. Those of you who are here for the very first time, you are all most welcome to Beautiful Ashes. The beauty is your miracle. The light at the end of the tunnel, being able to overcome any situation. While the ashes are the silent and loud frustrations that you and I go through, Beautiful Ashes is here to rescue an endangered generation. Before we command our morning, uh, I'd like to welcome my dear friend. Hallelujah, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Stella. Rebecca, you must welcome. Thank you. Yes. She's called Mrs. Amoding Rebecca Rokidi. Hallelujah, Jesus. She's married in the royal family. <laughs> <laughs> You're almost welcome. Thank you, Stella. It's good to have you. My pleasure too. Mm. Pleasure. Now, we, sh we shall begin by commanding our morning. But I feel today, lead us in the morning prayer of commanding our morning. You okay. know, we decree and declare over our morning. Okay, let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this beautiful morning. Yes, Lord. We thank you for the gift of life. Yes, Lord. We thank you that you love us yes. beyond measure. Yes. We thank you that you make us feel that we are enough because yes. we are enough. Yes. We thank you for this day. We decree and declare that whatever we lay our hands to yes, will Lord. prosper. Yes, Lord. Whatever we are going to do in the marketplace will yield results. Yes. That Lord God Almighty will open doors where they have not existed before. Yes. That you continue to be our anchor. Amen. You'll be our friend. Amen. You'll be our refuge. Amen. You'll be our healer. Amen. You'll be our hope. Amen. We thank you, Lord, that you go before us. You level every mountain. Amen. Lord, you level every mountain and clear every valley on in, in, in our behalf. Amen. We thank you, Jesus. We bless your name for the rest of the day. Amen. With thanksgiving. Amen. In Jesus' much less name. Amen. amen and amen. amen. Single ladies, are you there? Wow. It is a single corporate ladies preparation for marriage. What you corporate ladies need to know. Rebecca, tell me, tell me, you know, I know Rebecca, we studied with her in HSC. That is at Seven Hills. Seven Hills, our school is no longer there. Our HSC. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're in Seven Hills College. Mm -hmm. yes. That is where we had our HSC from, and our headmasters are watching us. Yes, they must be online. Mr. Mr. Maloba, Mr. Nangosha, Mr. Oku Ogutu. You're almost welcome to Beautiful Ashes. Rebecca, I remember, I remember you younger, many years down the road, and I 
just remember years those years you used to work at a case clinic yes as an admin and uh, used to at what time did you used to study at daytime what did you used to study and work at the what, um, what was that actually i started my career journey at case clinic which is now case hospital that was in 1999 mm. <laughs> i joined the hospital when i was still at camp when i just joined campus mm. So because there was a challenge of tuition at that point I joined campus on mm. private uh so by the grace of god Dr Sebale gave me an opportunity to work uh, at case clinic then and uh I used to work in the night actually I was a nocturnal for three years mm. and I've shared a bit of that story in my book career moments mm. yes yeah, so I worked for three years while at campus I would work in the night I would work from 9 p.m. up to morning mm -hmm. throughout and then go home rest and then later freshen up to to go to to to, to school at, at campus at what time? so classes used to start at about 3 p.m. yes we were evening students but classes would start at around 3 yes so that would be 3 up to about 7 8 then i would just actually dress up from home come to class I, then proceed to the clinic for for for, for my session in how, the night how long were you in that clinic i worked from 99 up to 2008 so and you were paying your tuition yes i was paying tuition for myself and also paying tuition for my siblings so that was, it was a, it was painful but a very beautiful journey and i want to believe that that is the point where my purpose was also birthed okay yes. then what happened after was where did you go after case clinic so after case clinic uh, having worked at the at the front desk or customer care service immediately as soon as i finished my my i mean school i got a promotion like instantly at case clinic at case clinic so i became a clinic manager and uh, then when i became a clinic manager Uh, no so I became a customer care manager mm -hmm. so I started even heading the people that I had initially found on the role wow yes and then I got another promotion I was in that role for one year and I moved up into working as the clinic manager mm. but also supporting supporting on the human resource work so after case I moved to SAS I was there briefly uh, for about two years I went there to head HR and admin and also help set up a couple of systems that are, I want to believe are still working even now mm. so i worked under the leadership of dr grace kaisa and it was also a good journey and uh, at the same time i decided uh, uh, to go back to school to complete my masters mm. and uh, and between between sas and uh, my move to britannia i think i had a career break for almost six six months to a year and uh, cuz i also wanted to to finish up the masters that i had started mm. then after sas i moved to britannia now for me britannia was a turning point in my career because first and foremost the team was quite huge we had over 1400 staff wow and yes. uh, and what position did you have in britannia in britannia i was working as head of human resources and uh, i had uh, with that entire i also had a couple of members on that i was that were supporting me the mm. hr assistants mm. and uh, who were heading different factories within there but why i say it was a turning point the numbers that that the organization had were quite huge and then that the kind of workers that we have a majority were unionized staff but i celebrate britannia for being a turning point because it gave me an opportunity to learn a lot as far as the current career is really concerned i was able to pick on what happens in unions i was able to to look out things that can, i can do to motivate my team even up to now when i go to britannia you know they I, they still celebrate me and then from britannia and then shouts out to the britannia team that is watching wow. thank you for being a part of my career journey then i moved to to yeah. unilever actually i was head hunted for a start i wasn't keen to move because i think i had become comfortable with uh, with britannia so when unilever gave me the opportunity i have so far served in two capacities in unilever and um, and i moved in as hr service delivery specialist 
at that point I was supporting Uganda and Rwanda and uh, of course learning a lot of things being an FMCG but also uh, an international organization with headquarters in, in wow, the UK. Wow. Yes. This is my OG. <laughs> <laughs> so currently, yes, I am, I am uh, heading human resources still, but I do support Uganda and Tanzania by the grace of God. Amen. And I celebrate that I, I get to serve in the marketplace in that capacity. You know, you're the perfect corporate lady <laughs> for that day. What do you have to tell those ladies out there who have begun so so low and they feel so bad that they're able to they have to pay school fees for themselves fend for themselves like life seems to be a little hard can you just speak to them uh there is life at the end of the tunnel mm -hmm. yes you may be going through pain right now but also i want to believe that this is a time where your purpose is also being birthed true and if you do not align to the process, mm -hmm. if you process. miss the process, then there is a problem. Uh, but just enjoy the process, enjoy the journey. Uh, there will be fruit getting out of it. And also to encourage you that you become a better person mm. uh, because you speak from a place of experience and not just from a place of, of hearsay, mm. but you speak from a place of knowing. Mm. Yeah. Okay, then uh, you know there there are those who like give up along the way. When you were speaking, I looked back at the years. Yes. Where you almost never slept, the three years. Yes. Can you imagine working the entire night? Yes. And at daytime you have to be in school. Some people find it so hard to endure. Yes. The end. Can you talk about the moment of enduring? The moment of enduring. First and foremost, you need also to surround yourself with with people that will hold your hand mm. uh, on, on any journey. Uh, for me, I call them destiny helpers. And in this case, for me, I think uh, Dr. Sebale came into my life as a destiny helper. Mm. At that point, he believed in me and he saw a lot of potential that nobody saw. Okay. So when you avail yourself, mm. somebody is able to see uh, somebody Avail is able to see. Yeah, they are able to see your attitude. They are able to see the future on your own behalf. Because for you at this point, you've already probably given up. That's true. Yes. Yeah, so, if there are destiny helpers in your space, definitely they will hold your hand and help you to run, to run the race. Mm -hmm. But uh, again, even before the destiny helpers, for me, I think having been raised in a family that had a personal relationship with Christ and mm. knew God, mm. it helped us a lot. Uh, that would be a story for another day, but shouts out to the United Families. I know that family is watching, my brothers and sisters. It was tough, but again, the foundations that are laid at that point are very critical. Mm. Yes. That is very true. Yeah. You know, when, when somebody looks at you today, they might think, okay, you, you just went through that pain yes. at the moment. But along the way, you went through a terrible disappointment. Yes. You know, there are some ladies who are watching right now. Yeah. Some are single mothers. Mm. For you went through that and you managed to come out yes. of that situation. And today, God put you at another place altogether. Yes. Can you just talk about that? Oh, <laughs> I pray I don't get emotional here. I'm, but, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm together. I hope we, we both don't cry. Yes, <laughs> but uh, again, for me, it's process. Yeah, we, we go through things and most times it's painful. And especially from a place of being a single mom. First of all, I want a single mom to appreciate that he walked away on you. You didn't walk away on him. But again, there is a beauty in it. Mm. The children, the fruit that came forth from that space. Uh, and for any single mother out there, I would like you to appreciate purpose even on this journey. You could be there and you don't even know what decision to make. Look at it from a place of purpose. Mm. Even as you make decisions for yourself and the children or the child, look at it from the place of purpose. What have you learned in this? What are your takeouts? What are you going to use with the information that you've picked out? 
your journey could you could be going through this because you're supposed to become a situation changer out that's there true, that's to true. influence lives mm. your story is totally is also totally different that's and today right. we have beautiful ashes bathed so while you are in the journey appreciate the why you are in this space mm. the other thing that you also need to appreciate as a, a single mom is a process enjoy the process it might be painful but mm. if you don't enjoy the process then it's also a problem because mm. uh in this process it is the whole bit of refining there is shaping you there is cutting out the waste there is thinning the waste line there is a lot that happens in that space so just enjoy the process while you're doing this you know then another thing most times we find these corporate ladies are image making they are putting on make we're wearing makeup today but beyond the makeup they are going through things that nobody knows yeah. but they are battling with all that how can you well, how can you help out this career single woman mm. who is image making okay yeah first of all I must commend you that you are strong, you are bold, and also to let you know that you are beautiful. You who is trying to cover up, because I I speak from a place of experience. Uh, a couple of friends would admire. They would be like, "Wow, uh, Becky, you have it all. You know, you you are in a very good space," and they didn't know that. I also had my moments when I would feel broken and I would just lock myself up and cry but I would not share with anyone even some of the family members they eventually it's until the time when I talked to them about what I was going through mm. so I met a friend I know she's watching she told me that we need to deal with to start peeling the onions Okay. What does she mean by peeling the onions? So, uh, you and I know that if you've been to the kitchen and you're peeling the onions, most times you cry when you're peeling the, the onions. And it's okay to cry because when you put that onion in the stew, the flavor is good, the taste is good. So, sh we went into a session of peeling the onions and we peeled those onions until I felt like all the water had been drained out of the onions. So what am I trying to say? Forgive yourself. That is true. Forgive yourself because Father God has already forgiven you. So most of us we beat ourselves up so bad that you're not you've never even forgiven yourself. Mm, true. And yet Father God has already forgiven you. Mm. So it it starts from that place. But also as you cover up, learn to let go and allow healing to happen. There is room for everyone to be healed. You no, know, how how does somebody let go? How does somebody let go of all that? You know, their disappointments, this career corporate ladies go through at their places of work and this person is your boss. Mm. You really have to or they are used you at your place of work. How does somebody let go? Um even going to other disappointments outside the place of work. How does somebody let go and choose to move on? Okay, I'll, I had I think I'd mentioned to you that in the past. Um one of the things that for me personally I I have done with let going or I've done in the past is I confront the situation. Because I'm a kind of person if I don't confront it, then that means I'll keep in it. I don't and after I've confronted it, it's like nothing has ever has ever happened. Mm. So very critical for you to confront the situation especially that is causing you pain. Mm. And also to for me to appreciate that it's also okay to cry. Mm. It's also okay to be vulnerable. That's true. Very okay. Mm. Even the people that we look up to, the people that we admire, there are moments they break down. That's true. There are moments they cry. That's true. There are moments they feel like they are not enough. Mm. So you're not alone. So as you puff it up, mm. you might be affected by disease mm. like right. either high blood pressure, mm. stress elements. That's it true. will affect your your productivity. Mm. But I commend this category of people that every time they show up, it looks like things are beautiful. And uh, I will encourage you 
to keep being presentable, to keep building your personal brand, show up, but it's okay for you to cry. Mm. It's okay for you to find someone you can confide in. That is true. Yes. You know, it also reminds me, Rebecca, years ago while I, while, I, while I was hurting, this is what I used to do. The moments I used to feel so bad, that is the moment I could dress so well because it was also a cause of inspiration. Yes. Showing the enemy, it doesn't matter where I am. Or how I'm feeling, I'm going to dress very well. But this time around, you corporate lady, as you dress very well, look at the inside also. Yes. The work on the inside. Yes, yes. Mm. So it's very critical to deal with a software. Um, if you deal with a software, this all hardware, it will just like work that. out. I it like will that. just work out. I like so that. deal with the software, deal with the inner man. Mm. And then the, this this joy will ooze from within. That's true. And it will radiate even on the outside. Mm. Yeah. Now, if we if we go to busy career women. Yes. You know, so busy with their place of work. Yes. Can 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 you just talk to these career women who get so busy? They work so hard, and yet the rest of their life is dead. Um. First of all. First of all, have you been there? <laughs> ah, hey. Not once, not twice, but I thank God that uh, I did recovery, and uh, it's a work in progress. But uh, for busy career women, I'm also a believer. Even having talked to one of the friends, I know she's watching. She says that work-life balance, first of all, is an emotion, you know, and uh, also to believe that you just choose to be somewhere, and while you are there. Be, yeah, be in it, immerse yourself in it, solically, spiritually, physically, let mm -hmm. your whole mind be there. Mm -hmm. So then if it is work, just choose to be there mm -hmm. at that point and give it your best. Then after that, when you are out and you're stepping out, you do that while you're in the marketplace. So when you step out and you are in your social spaces, also give it your best. But my challenge with, uh, with the category of people in this, the ladies in this space, the busy career woman is, we get lost in it. That's true. And I want to encourage you that, uh, man, uh, my MD keeps saying that, uh, that uh, these jobs are actually temporary. True. Today you will have it, tomorrow it's no more. Now remember you've not built your social relations. You probably missed all the family engagements. Uh, you've also missed out on any social events with your friends because you're busy working. You're and working. that is why you're still single. <laughs> also, yes. And then also you find that there is no time to socialize. You know, a human being is also a social animal. So when you don't socialize, you're also depriving your body of very many things. I belong to a couple of social networks and I bless God that I am in those spaces. Shouts out to the PLF family. Thank you for allowing me, uh, like for, for, for calling out the greatness in me and especially the PLF visionary leaders. Because when you have a circle of friends, it also helps a lot as you build your social capital. Mm. You're able to also meet different people. Who knows True. you could meet a partner there. True. But also, you're not only there to meet a partner, but also you're building your social base, which is very critical. When there's a crisis, you can easily reach out to them. When you're in trouble, you know, they will be available. You'll just call. If, I, if you're to look at, you could be still that very busy, but if you look at, right now, I need like two million. And I look at the kind of friends that I have. <laughs> and I called level. five of them. Are they a kind that will quickly say, Becky, the two million is here. So also the kind of people in your space. I'm not saying this, the friends that cannot no. really support you no. in that kind of space. But also the kind of social capital that you build. It really matters. So do not destroy what you are there. Make it stronger they will be there with you on this journey. Who knows, maybe one of them, the brother could be like, you know what, I think I like this person. No, I just want us to throw more light on this. Yes. You know, when we get to those ladies who are just locked in there, you're talking about it, but I just want you to go a little further. Yes. Break it down for these busy corporate ladies. Some of them are not married. So, okay, they're not married. They're single. Mm single without children, 
single with children but the aspect we're talking about is them being so busy mm -hmm. how does this person really break break really break out you know, many times when you go for those gatherings someone is busy in this maybe they're in their very cocoon mm -hmm. just imagine if we went out together i would be around you yes. and uh, maybe there are those workmates they're around and they're not just can you can, I feel there's something you need okay, to tell Okay, really, somebody. around the, the busy people, first of all, for me, my work life works with the patterns. And once you create patterns for yourself, I think it helps a lot. And then also, you operate from a place of being very organized. Um, what do I mean? Like, uh, if I know that every Wednesday at 5.30, I am in this place building my social and spiritual capital with the this kind of people stick to the pattern okay i like that yeah stick That's, to the pr mm. pattern create a part a pattern that can be able to work for you uh people it's such that you're just not unpredictable people are like okay why is she at this time nobody even knows where you would be create a predictable pattern as a person agree to say from morning up to five i'll give my best to my employer thanks to unilever for giving me an opportunity to serve with you Yes, so give it your best. From 5 o'clock to 9 p.m., mm. what are you doing? Okay. We have gone for corporate events. Uh, cheers to the HR Managers Association. So sometimes you find that uh, there are colleagues in that space, yes. Uh, but when you go into that space, you're not making any new friend. Uh, you are still with the three people that you know. <laughs> and then you're talking about your three shillings. <laughs> and then there are guys who are in places whereby go there, make yourself also relevant whenever you go into this outing. Let's just, just stop it at that point. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for staying around. It is Beautiful Ashes, single ladies preparation for marriage. And this morning, the topic is what single corporate ladies need to know and beautiful ashes is made possible by the grace of god and kingdom finances remember every friday that is and sunday on our facebook page that is beautiful ashes with stella as a madia we have first of all we have the friday high voltage overnights where we pray together then afterwards we on sunday we have the sunday breakfast live that is at 10 a.m every sunday the overnight begins at 10 up to midnight from 10 to 11 with pastor ben ochola and from 11 up to midnight with me on our facebook page that is beautiful ashes with stella azamadia and remember to always listen in to beautiful ashes here on 96.6 spirit fm kampala we'll be back shortly please do not go anywhere your financial support you're helping beautiful ashes international ministries reach out to those in need with more partners there is a bountiful harvest give today on 0752 044 636 or 0776 044 636 or make a pledge beautiful ashes rescuing an endangered generation Staying around, it is beautiful ashes with your host Stella Azamadia. The beauty is your miracle, the light at the end of the tunnel, being able to overcome any situation while the ashes are the silent and loud frustrations that you and I go through. Today it is single ladies preparation for marriage. In fact, the grand finale is next week on Thursday. I'm with the Mrs. Ah, oh, ah, oh, oh. 
Ah, uh, I want to begin with your Rokidi, and as we say, oh, <laughs> Mrs. Rokidi, I'm ordaining Rebecca. She's married to a handsome prince from Toro. Hallelujah, Jesus. We shall get there. Before we went into the break, you're talking about we're talking to these career women, yes. single women who tend to be so busy. How can they loosen up? Yes. So I had talked about creating, uh, creating patterns, and then also uh, the other thing that one can do as a single lady to loosen up mm. is uh, availability on whatever you do. So if I am available right now to give it my all in the job that I am doing, give it your all. But when you're out of there and you go into your social space, mm. give it your best. When you, when you are with the children as a homemaker, as a mother, give it your best. Mm. So are you available? So like I'd said earlier, a friend was like, you know, the work-life balance, it's an illusion. But just be available and be in it uh, when you're doing anything in this space. Uh, so it's very critical to make yourself very, very available and mm -hmm. very relevant, very relevant. I think that is very key because you can be available and irrelevant. On phone. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've seen that quite a lot. You go out with, uh, I go out with Stella for a drink and the next thing she's looking at the phone and we've come out to, to <laughs> hang out and to catch up. So everyone looks at, you know, is busy looking at the phone. I think that is just not, it's not good. Be available and also in it, mm. yeah. Okay, that, that is all. I, I felt you really had, had more to tell these this, this career single women. Yeah, the other thing also is, um, the other thing is, uh, I think I'd mentioned to you earlier, is on personal branding. And personal branding is just not looking at the, the image, my presentation, but personal branding comes from within. All right. The values, what do you stand for? as a marketplace leader? What have you been known for? What kind of legacy are you leaving behind? True. So even as we are doing these things on this entire journey as a career woman, as a busy person in the marketplace, it's very critical to have values that are attached to you. If someone said that uh, we called Rebecca stealing, would people just say, yeah, I think she is. Or others would actually defend and say, you know what, I think I'll stand by this. Mm. She is not the kind of place. Mm. What is your brand? What do you stand for? What values define you? It's a really very, very critical. And also on this journey, very important to be prepared. That's true. Very important to be prepared. So uh, you find that most of us, uh, let's say, for anything that you're going to do, be it a job interview, be it waiting on God for a spouse, be it, uh, you know, traveling, you prepare ahead of time. Let the other party not find you unprepared. Like, for example, if I'm going for a job interview, I have to do, I mean, to look at my checklist also. That's right. That's the other thing. Have a checklist on you. Even as you prepare, what exactly are you looking out for? Uh, it's very, very critical uh, for you to, to be in such a place because if you have your checklist, you just not land for anything. The job could be good, for example, and it's paying you a lot of money, but the values of that organization do not resonate with your values. That's right. So it is very critical as a corporate single person there, be very prepared in season and out of season. <laughs> you know, Rebecca, you know, yes. It took you some years to get married. Yes. And I think it's because uh, people could have been fearing you. Some corporate ladies are feared. Yes. You know, they are, uh, you know with the positions that they have. Yes. So you are an HR already. Yes. And approaching. How can they really be approached? How yes. can they tone down to be approached? I know there are many out there that have their... The, they have their property, yeah. living this kind of life. How can they? How can they be approached? Okay, first of all, the people in this space, uh, why they are in the state they are in, once beaten, twice shy. So I think people come from a place of fear. You're fearing uh, to make the same mistakes that you probably made in the past, or you're also protecting your heart. And your, t your title. Yes, you're protecting your heart, and you're like, no, I won't get into this. However, 
Uh, again, I'll take you back to, to your social network. It's very critical. Uh, yeah, even, even in this season, as, as you are looking at transitioning into either a new relationship or looking out for a relationship as a busy career person. And it's very true that... Uh, that the men fear to approach ladies who seem uh, to... Uh, uh, first, tell us a little bit. I want to hear your story. <laughs> I want to hear your oh, story. Goodness. How did Mr. Okidi Edward... Hey, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. How, how, how did he... Have, because I know you. I know you from, from school. Eh? Yes. You're a go-getter, yes. stick to it, yes. a strong choleric. Yes. <gasps> yes. So, um, yes. And uh, first of all, it's very true that uh, people fear. And I have a couple of friends. I know they're even watching. Uh, they are career women. They've made money. Um, and then now you are in a space where you're like, okay, I think I need to settle. But there are all the things that you've made. You mm. have your five cars packed mm -hmm. there. You have your acres of land. And then, um, and then, you know, you have these houses and then, there is always a lot of fear. <laughs> Do you know what I imagine? Yes. <laughs> Social distancing. I know, right? <laughs> I imagine. Yes. I imagine this guy who is staying in a two-roomed house and this lady, the kind yes, of lady yes. that you've been, you've been, you've been speaking about. Yes. I just imagine. Yes. So uh, even in this, and also I know there are men watching. Do not fear. Mm. Approach them. Yeah. And again, I have come to realize that. You compliment each other. Uh -uh. Breaky, we are, we are drifting. We, we are, are not drifting. <laughs> we compliment each other. So, if, yes, okay, we are not drifting, I really think. Because for me, at the back of my mind, I know that when you walk into this, you compliment mm -hmm, each other. Mm -hmm. But, okay, the thing is, the ladies, definitely, they are protecting those things. Mm -hmm. And someone is like, you know what, when I get in it, uh, sometimes even they will not declare that those things are there. And then you want to start on a clean slate and say, ah, ah, let's start afresh. But uh, what I would like to tell the lady watching who has acquired all these things, first of all, I commend you. You're very hardworking. And I celebrate the fact that you are hardworking. But you are not going to get fulfillment from having these things. That is true. Yeah, because at the end of the day, you'll find that the cars will be gone. The job will be gone. And you're just by yourself. Okay, we get back to your story. Yes, <laughs> you're just uh, you're just by yourself. So it is good to 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 make a consideration mm. if you can to get someone to walk life with, as far as say marriage is concerned. I know there are those that have written it off, and they are like, you know what? I do not want. I am happy as I am. And uh, just a nugget for a single mom who is all this, who already has her money and everything. I would just like to remind you that we protect the children a lot. And I, I think I was in that space. You protect the children and uh, your life is around the children. But now they are growing. Their needs are totally different. Even maybe the houses you're constructing for them are not the kind of houses they are dreaming to have in the future. So just live your life. The children have already started living mm -hmm. their lives mm -hmm. and... Uh, and they are looking forward to bigger things. So even as you live your life and the children are gone, so definitely you need a helper or you need to be helped. And it's very critical. And for me, again, uh -huh. marriage is ordained by God. So if you choose to get into it, run with it and give it your best. Don't go in with expectations. So during the break, I was telling Stella that, uh, I think earlier, that would you marry you? So sometimes no. you find that we are looking for the kind of perfect guy. And that's also what is putting some of us at bay. You're like, no, you have your 10 point program. But again, would you marry you? No. Yes, so because you, you find that you're like, I want this, I want this. But are you that? So work towards what you're looking forward to. That is just a nugget. Okay. Okay, on your side. Yes. Seriously, I, w I want somebody to be helped yes. by your story. Yes. That this man comes into your space. Yes. You are up there in HR. Yes. How was it? Can you just tell okay, us? Okay, uh, first and foremost, I think by the time my husband walked into, into my space, I, I had written off, you know, erased with black, bold, and I'd written off marriage. 
and told myself, you know what, I can raise these beautiful, awesome children by myself. I already have children. I, Only two. I, yes, I already have the <laughs> children. It's not a lot of money, but just enough to sustain me. I have what I have, and it's just okay for me. So I was in that kind of space. But then it happened that at a given point in time, I remember my auntie, she's watching, she reached out and just one day, she was like, but Becky, um, every time I see you keep saying you're busy, you're busy, and I'm like, yes, we are busy at work. And sometimes there's a way we, we quite work yeah. that you're busy, you know? And yes, the, tru the truth is you're busy, but again, you can't be too busy for yourself. That's true. So she just told me that I think I need you to have a reflection and I'm going to give the same advice to the single person watching who has probably given up on this journey. So I did a personal and self-reflection because even that was like a prayer item I didn't even look into. I was like, I'll not even bother to talk to God about this. First of all, he allowed me to go through what I went through. And you know, so I was also mad at God. I was mad at myself. But then, mm. why destiny helpers are critical? There is that person who observes you and feels you're good enough and there's a lot of potential in you, you can do it. She's like, I think uh, maybe you need to refresh your life and uh, consider just, 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 create, just getting into a new mm. network of friends. True. And I'm like, ah, okay. So she talked, but because she's my auntie, I love her. I was like, okay, it's fine, I'll look into it. Then also, I know those of moms sometimes would call, uh, but you, you see that they have their own silent pains and also your cousins and brothers, sometimes when you are in family events, yeah, you, you look accomplished. And there, it was a bit of a concern. And I know there's someone watching, <laughs> family is concerned, they're like, hey, you have this, you have that. When this is what of this? Yes. But I didn't do it for my family. I didn't do it for, for my friends. When I did a personal reflection, I think that was a deal breaker. I was like, okay, the children I'm protecting right now will actually move on and I'll be by myself. And I was like, okay, I was like, I think I need a helper. I, I mean, I mean, I need, I, I think I need, this is something I need to look into. And then also secondly, when I am of age, it gets lonely when you're just by yourself. True. So I prayed about it. And at that time, there was nobody. <laughs> I prayed about it because I'd stopped praying. And I, I think the time when the previous relationship went bad, uh, I actually, I think that time I started praying and I wanted like instant answers. There's Friends no know. Answer. And the time when you need the answer, I, I know it will well. never come through like immediately. Because either the answer is for the wrong reasons, you also want to prove the other person, to prove the other person that, that you friend, can move on, you can I get can, someone yes. better. But also while in the wait, uh, some of the things that I did, I did a lot of, uh, not really self-help, but I chose and I purpose to be happy. Mm. I would get the money and just travel with my children and ask them, just tell them this time, uh, during this time, we are traveling. What are we going to do? Nothing. We we'll just go, travel, eat, wake up, sleep. That made me happy. The children were happy. But when I would be by myself, I would be like, oh my God, I wish I was with somebody to experience this thing. But then, mm. also later, of course, people will tell you the age, time is running out, you're getting old and the like. I know some of you have been told that. Again, you've also heard other people say that age is just a number. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just a number, but while you're there, the fear starts looming in. While you're like, in the edge. Yes, even in the edge, <laughs> you're like, now, what? What will happen? You know, let, yeah. let's just get to this point. So, how how does this mind come into your space? Yes, so, um, so I just wanted to give that background. And uh, at that point, I was like, you know what, by the way, I'll give the same advice. Pick on, if, if, if the person comes into your space, get into it. But again, if it doesn't work for you, drop it. Because all may not be able, all will all not work out. That's true. Yes. So you get into it and you're like, if it works out fine. If it doesn't, I'll keep him for 
as one of the one of the friends I'll have in my circles. So that was it for me. But again, as you're praying, remember there's another person also praying and believing God to meet you. I think not even thinking mine was a divine connection hallelujah yes. jesus and uh, also why i had said earlier that preparation is very key uh preparation is key because just imagine most times we are praying mm -hmm. mukama bring this person that's true yeah bring this person forth and you're praying but yourself you're not prepared so in the enjoy the process prepare that helped me quite a lot and when edward came into my into the picture I remember the first the first date that we had. I even freaked out to meet him. I was like, ah, there are people who are watching. They know that story. I, ju I even I just said I'm not showing up. Even him where he was, he didn't show up. Well, I, th I think that was went, that was the first meeting that you yes, guys were we were to scheduled have. to meet. No, he ran late, and then later I was like, I think they're like, please go. So anyway, I was like, ah, let me go. And I found a very warm person, very likable. But I told myself, no. You know, they all start like this. And then later, you know, they can become something else. <laughs> but, and then I told, I just told God, come in this thing. Mm. Show me that this is it. Otherwise, I don't want to waste time and also to waste his time. Mm. And in that moment, we just realized, I just realized that the things that I had laid out, that I told God about, mm. most of the things, I found them in this person. Wow. Like, bless the Lord that uh, we are enjoying this journey. How many years of marriage? Three years now. Seventh, we had our anniversary. I, I bless God and uh, for the fact that Edward is very, he's just the perfect piece in that puzzle. Thank you so much for loving us and the family, my, the children and then also the outer, the outer family, our in-laws and the like. I thank God for you, Edward. I thank God for the people that have been a part of this journey, mm. my spiritual leaders, you know, Rachel and Noah, thank you. The church members, Mose <laughs> and Ari, you're awesome. Yes, wow. I really bless God. And also the people in different platforms that I'm on, that mm. they've been part of. Part of this you journey. know, there are, the, there are those ladies out there they are above 30, they are almost cloaking, they're in their 40s yes. or almost cloaking 40, they have really waited. Can you just speak your heart out to them, then we shall have a word of prayer as we wind up the program. Yes, so while you are waiting, uh, I don't want you to despair, there is hope. There is hope in this. And then also, the Lord will grant all your heart desires. Amen. Yes, He will grant your heart desires. Just bring them to Him with the right reasons. Yeah, very critical. And then also, do not be derailed by age. True. Yeah. Age, I will also say it's a number. <laughs> yes, it's a Amen. number. But of course, you cannot stop the fears. But continue to walk in your purpose, even as you're doing this. Pursue it, even on this journey. It's, it's very, very critical. And then also to remind you that you are enough. Yeah, you are enough. And uh, God is crazy about you. Amen. He loves you. And the, in you, there is someone really. There's someone out there meant for you. Amen. So don't even be in a rush to pick on anything because you might get a counterfeit. True. And you know what counterfeits can do? There are very many out there. But in, in the meantime, as you wait, mm. very important for you to be, to just be prepared in season and out of season. That's true. Because when acceleration comes in your way, uh, you may not even have time to do certain things. Continue to brand yourself very well. Uh, what do you stand for? Stand out. Stand out. Don't try to, you know, there's a blog I was reading by one young lady. I don't know if she's watching. Don't struggle to fit in. Also try to stand out. If you're outside, stand out. Don't struggle to fit in because you don't know what people are going through even as they are inside there. That's true. There. That's yeah. true. Thank you. That's true. A word of prayer. Yes. Uh, I'm going to make a declaration over all those that are watching that, uh, uh, that, that the Lord God uh, will do a new thing in your space. Amen. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, yes, Lord. I thank you for everyone who is listening in at the sound of my voice. Yes, Lord. I thank you for the single moms. I yes. thank you for the busy career women. 
I thank you for the marketplace leaders. I yes, thank Lord. you for those that you've blessed beyond measure that they have it all. Yes, Lord. I thank you for that one that is crying day at night and has decided to conceal it. Mm. Father, I decree and declare that Lord God Almighty, for each one of them, you will come through. They will be able to walk out on pain. They will just not settle for less. Yes. They will appreciate that they are enough. Thank they you. will also appreciate the law of timing, yes, the Lord. law of process yes, in Lord. the name of Jesus. Father, I decree and declare the blessings of Jacob, Amen. Isaac, and Abraham. Amen. And the blessings of Sarah. Amen. That Lord God Almighty, you will come through for them. Yes, even Lord. in this season, Almighty Father. Yes, Lord. That Jesus, you will have for, for each one of them someone cut out for them yes Lord. but even for those that have chosen not to take this journey that they will enjoy the journey they will enjoy the process but for them also to appreciate that 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 it is good for it's good for a man to get married that yes, even Lord. when these people come into their space they will appreciate that they are here to do multiplication whatever they are doing is for generations to come we bless your name with thanksgiving in Jesus' matchless name. Amen. Amen. Ladies, thank you so much for being with us this wonderful morning. I know there are some gentlemen who are watching out yeah. there. Thank you. Beautiful Ashes is made possible by the grace of God and Kingdom Finances who pay for the radio programs and the TV programs as well. You can decide to partner with Beautiful Ashes today on 0776-044-636 or 0752-044-636. Every Friday before the lockdown, we used to have Friday high voltage overnights. But this time around, we have the online overnights. That is from 10 p.m. up to midnight. From 10, we have Pastor Ben. Then from 11, I lead you in the high voltage online overnight. That is on our Facebook page, Beauty for Ashes, with Stella Azamadia. Then on Sunday, we have Sunday Breakfast Live on our Facebook page, Still Beautiful Ashes with Stella Zamadia. If you missed out the previous episodes of Beautiful Ashes, you can just go to our YouTube channel that is Stella Azamadia. You can follow us on Twitter that is at Stella Azawan. God bless you so much. May the Lord bless you and keep you catching Beautiful Ashes on 96.6 Spirit FM Kampala. Monday to Friday, that is from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. Rebecca, it's been so good having you in the studio today. My pleasure. You wanted to send greetings out to yourself. Yes, I would seconds. like to send out greetings to the Unstoppable Leaders at the Harvest Institute, uh, my church family, Worship Harvest, my Unilever team, thank you so much for doing life with me, mm. the PLF family, thank you so much that we are in this together, the mentorship moments which I lead together with uh, Juliet Impima, shouts out to you, my family, the United Families, you're all awesome. And then also the church leadership where I pray from. And the rest of the guys that have been able to join in this, thank you so much. I celebrate you. God richly bless you. And finally? And finally, shout out to my children <laughs> who I, whom I know are watching. And uh, yeah, they are glued on the TV. And also my husband. Uh -huh, thank you so much <laughs> for, for, making, for giving me reason to wake up every day and for making me fall in love with you every uh -huh. other day. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. that is all we had for you today. Bye-bye. Yes. Till Bye -bye. we meet again next week on Thursday here in Beautiful Ashes on Spirit TV. A place for you. Today, with your financial support, you're helping Beautiful Ashes International Ministries reach out to those in need with more partners. There is a bountiful harvest. Give today on 0752-044-636 or 0776-044-636 or make a pledge. Beautiful Ashes, rescuing an endangered generation.